Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All right. Do we have any first-time visitors with us today? Don't be bashful. We're actually going to give you something. <laughs> ah, well. Don't forget to uh, register your attendance at, uh, uh, at the end uh, of the pews, at uh, the little red thing. At, uh, just as so um, you know everybody that's here, people who are sitting in your pews. Uh, and don't forget to uh, fill out your prayer cards and it, uh, you'll collect those uh, during the offertory. Do we have any announcements? Oop, here comes somebody. Yes, you do, because people at home need to know what you're saying. Okay, I'm, obviously, you can hear me. <laughs> but um, it's June, so now we're in the downward slide heading towards the change of the pastors from this church to another church and a church coming to our church. So we want to just make sure that everybody knows what the, what's happening right now. So downstairs on the bulletin board, there are three or four pieces of paper to tell you what you can sign up for to come to the luncheon on the 23rd. And um, you just put your name and what you want to bring so that we don't get, you know, the same thing ten times. But there's, there's three or four different papers, so you can have your choice of whatever you want. Um, and then we have um, some things that, that have already are going to begin in the, in the part, parsonage, but not till the middle of the month. So there's another sheet on the other board that has things that need to be done and they, the helpers that they would like to have on that one. Um, and then today, we, you know, now that it's June, we have 30 months, 30 days for the two parish pastors. And we need to make sure we continue to pray for both of them, Ma Rhonda and for Martha. Um, Martha especially because she has quite a, a right now, um, a family thing going on with her mother. And um, she's at a, something this, this day, which is why she's not here today. But we just need to make sure we pray for them and welcome them um, and then congratulate them and then say we're sorry that you are leaving us and um, that we would like to honor you and which is why we're having the luncheon on the 23rd. Um, and as we were talking, people have been talking to me about what they would like to give her and it seems to be coming up that some, they would like to buy a stole for her, um, for her um, gown. And we sort of thought, we looked at the Cokesbury book, and it looks like there's one that has children on it, and we're thinking that maybe that would be one that she would really like, because um, I don't know what colors she has. I never wrote them all down over the last five years, so I don't know what colors she needs. But we thought that, the, and there's a very cute um, children's one in there, so um, if you would like to help donate to pay for that, uh, you can give the money to, um, <laughs> if you would like to, give it to Jackie right today. Um, and if not, you can, put it, you can put it in an envelope and then just put it in the slot, and Donna will keep it locked up so that we have it available, and we'll probably order from here because they have the Cooksbury um, in their files. Um, and then... They're, they're downstairs in the fellowship hall after, after church. If you come down there, there's a, a bulletin board on the side, and you'll see them because they are a little bit decorated, so you'll see them. <laughs> um, and then, um, let me just see what else I need to get here. Um, I know there was something else I was going to... Oh, the cards. Um, since the postal numbers have gone sky high, there's no sense in you sending, spending 68 cents across the street to put a postage on a pay on a card that you're going to send across the street. So if you would like, if you're going to want to get to give cards to either um, Pastor Martha or Pastor Rhonda to, th to welcome her down the road um, when she comes, because she'll be here the first Sunday in um, July. But the white box is down in the fellowship hall, so you can bring the cards and just put them in that box, and um, I will watch it, and Donna's watching it, and we'll take them out you know, every day or every other day so that they don't get mixed up with something else. 
And then on the day that we have Martha's party, I'll take them all out and wrap a ribbon around them and then hand them to her, and then she can read them at her leisure after that. And then if there's anything in there for Rhonda, I will make sure that um, she gets those. She's going to be coming the last Friday of this month with her roofing ban, so we can probably give her a few then to, that if you have a welcome sign for her or a welcome card, and, you, and it can be three or four or how many people you want to, to um, write on the card, but at least that way um, we are, she'll be seeing that, that we're welcoming her and looking forward to getting to know her. And Martha has kind of kept her um, in, the, in the area of our church by showing her around the church. Um, she's showed her the files. She's showed her the people that um, don't get to come to the church because they have to watch Zoom because they're, either because of their health or because they don't drive anymore or for some other reason. So she knows where most of those people are as well. So um, there's lots of things that we're doing to kind of get both of them <laughs> under control so that they end up... <laughs> going their separate ways in a, in a very kind fashion. And for uh, um, Rhonda, I also, I've been making a basket that I've been going around to the Chamber of Commerce, the stores, things like that, and I'm making a basket full of papers so that she will know the environment and you know what we have and what we do and what happens in the town. So if you have anything that you know or if a group that you belong to, she would probably like to know about that as well. So. I will just keep posting you, and at the end of the um, month, I will let you know what we need to do for Rhonda on the, that last Sunday before we leave. So I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, for all your hard work, you and your committee. I just want to quick um, say that we're also looking forward. August is going to bring Vacation Bible School, August 12th to 16th. So put that on your calendars right now. Registration cards will be out for next Sunday when we have Children's Sunday. But start thinking right now also about if you would like to help as a leader, teacher. Um, we would love to have you. Talk to me or Val Gilcher. Thank you. Uh, the choir will be participating in the Choral Fest over at the Madison Congregational Church this afternoon. Program begins at 4. They've got about 10 choirs, and uh, it'll end with 130 singers and a 20-piece orchestra. So join us. We were born to make it manifest the glory of God that is, written, that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, your presence, uh, our presence automatically liberates others. All right, okay. Oh, birthdays and anniversaries. Yes. Tom Sims has a birthday this week. All right. Up in the oh, yes. Your yes, your father's birthday. Very good. Yes, ma'am. Nine. Ooh, yes, Don. My great grandson is <laughs> Your great grandson. All right. Don, you're not old, are you? No. Oh, I didn't think so. <laughs> Any others? Well, let us sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. So let us now stand and pass the peace. We're just going to, where you're at, just wave to everybody.
Would you please stand for the uh, call to worship? Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his victory and has revealed vindication in the eyes of the nation. The Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Time for a hymn, and it's uh, Gather Us In. It's in your uh, bulletins. Thank you. God, in mystery and silence, you are present in our lives. Bring new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to preserve your hand of the gentle folding of our lives and to attend the gentle guidance of your spirit that we may discover the hope in Jesus' name, amen.
Bob, you got that choir well trained. Uh. I think it's the other way around. Oh. <laughs> Our scripture lesson today is in Mark 8, 31 through 35, and it can be found in the New Testament on page 41. And then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes and be killed, and after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciple, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. First of all, no one can take Martha's place. Let's just be clear about that to begin with. Um, I'm sorry the children left because those four children sitting over there, they were phenomenal. They were so well behaved. And mom was up in the choir going, shh. They were great. Don't worry about it. They were wonderful. They were so cute, too. Um, I also got here a few minutes early for fear of being late. And, um, Got to see some of the children rehearsing for next week. All I can say is don't miss it. I'm sorry I'll have to, but I'm, you guys will have a great service with the children. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. And uh, it's, if I was a youth group kid, I would love to be in this building. We used to play a game called sardines when we were kids, right? You hide in a corner and you keep hiding. There are so many nooks and crannies in this building, it is awesome. <laughs> and the last thing I want to say is, you are blessed to have a choir. The number of congregations, I give them a round of applause because they do really deserve it. I know, I know God gets the glory, but they deserve it too. Um, I've preached a lot in retirement in a lot of different churches and a choir just adds so much to the worship service. So. I'm sure that, Bob, they lead you more than you lead them, so uh, congratulations to the choir. Let's pause for a word of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives, for your love and your grace and your mercy. Be with us in this time of worship. May what I say be inspired by your grace and your mercy as I learn to step aside and to allow you to speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. For the last four years or so, I've, when I wake every morning, eager to face the day and all the challenges and opportunities that will come, I try to do something before even I get out of, out of bed. I try to remember that it's important for me to deny myself, to take up my cross, and to follow God. And so while I'm laying there in bed, just waking up, thinking about the day, I pause for a moment and I say a prayer. Currently the prayer I'm saying is, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Fill my heart with your love, fill my mind with your peace. And then I put my feet on the floor and start the day and some days are better than others. But what I've learned, what I've discovered is that while I don't always succeed in doing it the way that I would like, in the way that God calls me to live my life, 
on the days that I remember to turn it over, to turn it over to God and get out of God's way, I come a whole lot closer. As I said, currently I start my day by saying that simple prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Fill my heart with your love. Fill my mind with your peace. But sometimes I say a different prayer. And what I say throughout the day always differs. Sometimes it can be as simple as, not my will, but yours. Or, God, guide me. Or God, in this moment, show me the way, the way of faith, the way of hope, the way of love. Sometimes my prayer is in the form of a question. God, what is the loving response? What is the faithful response in this moment? And then when all else fails, there's the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen is right, and I am such a control freak that I need to say that prayer more times than you think. But each of these prayers stems from a spiritual discipline that I've discovered over the last four years that I heard and I try to practice it. It's known as the three Ps. And for those of you who watch ION TV, it is not that commercial about insurance that says price, price, price. <laughs> it is simply this, pause, pray, proceed. Pause, pray, proceed. In those 30 seconds, my perspective can change. Amen. Because doing this brings clarity and it brings healing in a situation rather than more chaos, more anguish, and more pain. Each prayer reminds me that my life goes better when I'm willing to turn it over to God when I'm willing to deny myself, which means take myself out of the center, to remember that I am not God. I may know some things, probably not as much as I think, but God knows all things. Take up my cross, which means to admit my need and my dependency on God, and follow God's will for my life by doing it God's way instead of mine. The problem, my friends, is that we live in a culture and a society that does not encourage us to do that. It doesn't encourage us to embrace the Easter promise. Instead, we're taught to be independent and self-reliant, that our success is self-made. We're told again and again that only the strong survive and that vulnerability is a weakness. In truth, you and I can also be a little selfish and a little self-absorbed, seeing life in terms of only how it impacts us, how it inconveniences us and not others sometimes even those we love the most, sometimes even those to whom we are the closest connected. For these and other reasons, it is difficult for you and I to get out of God's way. It truly is. But the reality is that we are not in control of our lives as much as we would like to think or believe that we are. And admitting that we are not God is, I believe, the biggest existential crisis that we as individuals, that we as a nation, and that we as a world, and sometimes even we as a local church, have to struggle with. 
It is the source of so much unnecessary pain, some struggle, resentments, conflicts, destruction. This morning's prayer of confession that we will read later describes this beautifully. God in whom alone we find rest. We confess that we often turn from the gifts of identity, purpose and meaning that you would give us. Instead of serving others, we serve ourselves. Instead of being motivated by love, we are motivated by fear. Instead of seeking wisdom, we seek possessions. Instead of working for peace, we work for security. Instead of seeking our good in you, we look to so many other places, trading your abundant and enduring love for the shiny things of this world. Draw us back to you, O God, and remind us that we all have need and that we will find what we need for ourselves with you and with one another. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm not suggesting that you and I consciously or intentionally do the things that this prayer describes. It is more subtle, more cultural than that. Still, its impact on the way we live our day-to-day -day lives, as well as the way we try to deal with life's trials and tribulations, sometimes leaves us lost and unsettled. The results are that we are not dealing with things we're not dealing with the issues in our lives in the way that we would like. Instead, what we do is we keep score. We hold on to grudges, resentments, poor choices, bad decisions. Most of us in this congregation are old enough to remember the Smothers Brothers. What was their famous line? Mom always liked you, mom loved you best, or mom liked you best, right. Always liked you best. We laugh at that line, but it also hits a chord the way that humor often does. Now I will be the first to admit that denying ourselves, taking up our cross and following God does not protect us or save us from life's trials and tribulations. People we love and care about will get sick. People we love and care about will die long before their time has come. But a strong faith in a loving and merciful God, a healing and redeeming God, does offer us courage, the ability to cope, the ability to hold on to hope. It can give us strength. It can give us wisdom. It can give us insight. And it reminds us that we do not have to go it alone. If you and I truly get out of God's way, we will discover the strength, courage, mercy, and hope to overcome and prevent so much of the adversity, so much of the chaos, so much of the hostility that we bring upon ourselves and each other. I have witnessed this happening in both my life and the lives of others. When we accept that we do not always know what is best and get out of God's way and let God be God, what results is a transformation a transformation of the way that we see ourselves, the way we see others, and the way we see life. Have any of you heard of something called Midnight Run? Midnight Run is an operation, this is kind of, we're kind of far from New York City, but Midnight Run is an operation, an organization that's been around for probably 40 years. And what it does is it feeds people on the streets of New York City. So every night, about five or the seven nights a week, a group of people get into a van and they bring food and they bring blankets and they bring clothing and in the wintertime they bring gloves and hats 
and went underwear all year long, and socks, and soup, and something else to drink. And we drive around certain spots in New York City, and we feed the homeless. I used to do this fairly often when I lived down in Westchester County and the lower Fairfield County. I don't do them as often anymore. And over the years, I probably have done 75 to 80 runs. But I remember this one particular run that I did one night. It was a winter night. The weather was miserable. It was misty and rainy and cold and damp and just, ugh. And on top of it, I was in a pretty crappy mood. I will admit that I was not in a good mood and I did not really want to be where I was going. But I had agreed to drive the van, so I had to go. My job as the driver was when I got to the stop, I would get out and I would stand on the side of the van and while others handed out clothing from the back and walked around with soup and coffee and conversation with the homeless, I would hand out toiletries and underwear from the side of the van. Well, this stop was starting to wind down and like I said, I was not in the best of spirits. So as a driver, I had to go find out where our next stop was, right? That's what I told myself. The truth is, I know Manhattan by the, like the back of my hand. I didn't need to go find out where our next stop was. I was cranky, I wanted to get in the van. I wanted to sit where it was warm. So I did that and I opened the map and pretended to look where I was going. And while I was sitting there in my misery, I heard a knock on the window. I probably rolled my eyes, which is not the right thing to do. And I opened the window and a gentleman standing there said to me, I know it's cold, but do you mind if I have a blanket? And I thought to myself, and part of my French here, I thought to myself, Eric, you are such an ass. Get out of this van. And I got out of the van and I went around and I got this guy a blanket and I stood there and I talked to him. I think of that every time I do a midnight run. I think about how that knock on the window transformed me. That was God's way of saying, it's not about you, Eric. Get out there. Do what you're called to do. Be my disciple. Be my child. Share love. I tell that story every time I take a newcomer on a midnight run. And I think of that night every time I do a run, hoping it will never happen again. My friends, in those moments when we remember or are reminded to get out of God's way, we discover deep in our soul what a faith-filled response is. We experience the hope and promise of a faith which is that when God is present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair and growth out of difficulty, we can give thanks that God does not leave us alone, but labors to make us whole. And if we look for it, we can perceive God's hand in the unfolding of our lives and attend to the gentle guidance of God's spirit as we discover the hope that God offers not just to us, but to all of God's children. This gift is offered every day, all the time. It is part of the Easter promise. It is there whether we recognize it or not. It is the promise that God's hope, love, healing, forgiving, redeeming grace lives to change and transform each one of us. It lives, it lives. God's grace lives today. God walks with us, God talks with us along life's narrow way. God lives, God lives. Redemption to reveal. You ask me how I know God lives? God lives within our hearts.
I hope you will join me in celebrating that God lives in our hearts. And more than celebrating it, take it and live it. For if you do, I can promise you one thing. You will be amazed, amazed by the changes you see and experience. Amen. Our hymn is, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Let us stand and sing that together. Let us now turn to God in prayer. And God, we give you thanks for your love and grace as it moves in our lives. We give you thanks that we have come together as a community of faith to discover how you touch us, how you heal us, how your grace and love redeem us and call us to be about those same things, to be about offering redeeming love and grace to inviting people to catch a glimpse of your spirit, a glimpse of the kingdom, remembering that what they do with that glimpse is between you and them. We give you thanks for the work this community of faith does, for the mission work it has done and continues to do, for the sense of welcoming and invitation that is present by those who greet you when you come in the door. We give you thanks for the ministry that will continue amidst the change and transitions of pastoral leadership. And we pray for this congregation. I pray for this congregation in this time of transition. Open them to your grace and love in new ways, in ways that allow them to say goodbye, to remember that people come into our lives and their physical leaving does not mean they don't leave their mark, does not mean they don't touch our school. to be welcoming and inviting to their new pastor, to, to welcome that person with a sense of joy and gratitude, to allow that individual to come alongside and be in ministry and, and mission with them. Give them the patience and wisdom they need, not to teach how we do it, but to discover how we can do it together, Amen. how we can do it led by your grace, by your understanding, that we are constantly changing and transitioning, growing. 
open us to your spirit in ways that allow us to be a channel of your peace, in ways that allow us to offer healing and hope as we pray for a world that needs to know more about your peace and grace, more about redemption between two individuals, between groups of people, between nations, guide us and uphold us. We pray too for the United Methodist Church in this time of change and transition, that you will lead us and that we will be open to your leading. For this and so much more, we offer our prayers. And now let us pause and in silent prayer, share with you our thoughts. Uphold us, enrich us, and challenge us, and where necessary, prod us along that the love we receive may be the love we share. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we prepare to come to our Lord's table and offer to receive the gifts of the bread and the cup, let us now offer our gifts and our tithes to God. And to those who are watching online or through Facebook, please remember that you can support the church as well. And we thank you for your support in advance.
Will you join me in the prayer of dedication? Bless the gifts of the Lord of all, that we might worship you with great joy and serve your people with great love. In Christ's name, amen. Please be seated. I think we join. The concerns that we have raised, we ask that you bless them, and we know that you will bless them with your healing mercy. Remind us that we cannot change what happens, but we can trust in your grace as you see us and others through. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Remembering the words of the psalmist, let us be silent. Be silent to know that I am God, says the Lord. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in and be with that one. Let us open the doors of our hearts to receive the good news that in Jesus Christ we are reconciled and reconciling people. Thanks be to God. Amen. You remember that on that night when he was betrayed, Jesus lifted the bread, the normal, most basic of foods. He held it up in order that all those who followed him in his ministry might see the wonderful diversion, the diverse creation that is God's bread. He wanted them to see the beauty of the bread. Because bread in its fullness is beautiful. It is an expression of the harmony of a wonderfully diverse creation coming together like a symphony. It is sunlight and rain, seed and soil, patience and patience. You must wear the toil, another in the searing heat, and nature's cooling breezes. All working, all playing together. It is wonderful. And then he broke it. He tore it more and said, This is the way it is, the way it has been, the way it will be. The beauty that God creates is broken again and again in your lives and in history. Every injustice, every act of bigotry, Every rampage and disease, every famine, every abuse of human life or creation balance is the brokenness of my body. This slope, all of the cosmos, again and again. And then he said, Take hey, and eat. That's right, you can eat. Know that you can eat even when you feel broken, even when the world is broken. God sets it up that way. You are not alone, not even there. You don't need to run from the brokenness. You can enter it. You can live even there. Take, receive, eat. But we hold that brokenness open. We weep over it and rage at it. And even as we do, Jesus loves to come. And he says, this is the way it can be. This is the cup of the new covenant, the new promise. It is my very life energy, and it is poured out for you. Why? Because God won't let the brokenness have the last word. The wild, intoxicating cup of life has the last word. Resurrection, not crucifixion. See how even now, as you dip the jagged edges of that morsel of bread into the cup, the healing begins. The promise surrounds and begins the transformation of the wounds. <coughs> Tell us and drink from this cup, poured out for you and for many, for the healing of the brokenness, which is what the forgiveness of sins is really all about. Now the statistical odds, they aren't with the cup, they're with the brokenness. But be assured that God is with the cup. And every small victory for justice, every new birth of hope against the odds, Every healing moment is the declaration that God won't leave it alone, won't leave us alone, until love and life get the victory. So now, I invite you to come to the bank and to join me as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, and I, who art in heaven, come to be thy name.
by God's grace and mercy, will you join me in the attitude of prayer? Lord, in this broken bread to feed our kind of spirits, break this fellowship and scatter us upon the shifting tides of your world. Make us instruments of peace and so is the light, pardon, faith, hope, and joy. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is together we serve.
Thank you.